morning. I need to make, and I guess I will start with, you see these cute little bears up here that are assisting me this morning, and uh, ladies, instead of roses going to the nursing home this year, these are what will be going to the nursing home for all the patients that the ladies do every year for, uh, I almost said Thanksgiving, but it's for Valentine's <laughs> time, so um, anyway, I, uh, I just ate some ham last night, so that must be what was running through my mind. Um, so those will be... Uh, given out and uh, so um, with that on the 30th that is a Saturday January the 30th ladies y'all need to meet up here at the church at 10 a.m. and you'll be working on getting the cards together and everything that goes with the bears and getting them ready to go uh, to the nursing home so again mark that down Saturday the 30th uh, 10 a.m. be here at the church and y'all will get everything together with these bears uh, in order to uh, get those down to the nursing home so that they can be uh, given out. Also, ladies, those that signed up for the t-shirts, we have the prices now. I guess Mary's been handing those out, but uh, have you given all the ladies one of those? I have, except one or two. Okay. Um, real quick, I'll, I'll just make the, the note uh, for those that are listening. Uh, size is si uh, small to large or $12. Uh, extra large, 2X, $14. That's a short sleeve. For the long sleeve, uh, small to large or 14 and extra large, 2X or 16 
And so make that note. And I imagine it's not too late to get a t-shirt. You can probably still sign up. And um, uh, maybe we'll even talk about getting a few extras of each size down the road. Somebody wants another one or something like that. We'll have those available. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. All right. So that is for the ladies. Um, real quick, uh, Wesley and Suzanne, uh, you remember they were back here in July um, uh, speaking to us. There are missionaries from Honduras have been home on leave. Uh, they were supposed to go back on the 7th, uh, but their flight got canceled, and there's not going to be right now uh, any new flights until February. But the understanding is that there's discussion that they will shut Honduras down again and not let anybody in. That's right. Um, so, uh, plus, as you know, too, they're requiring now uh, more and more airlines and even countries now are setting up these vaccine passports. And if you remember a couple of months ago, they said, oh, we're not going to do that. We'd never do that. Your preacher said what? They will do that. And guess what? They are doing that, folks, and just expect that to become a norm. But anyway, all of that put aside, um, they're not sure what's going to happen. So right now they are staying in the United States, but they are still in touch with uh, people in Honduras. And so uh, any donations that go for Honduras with uh, WIM, World Indigenous Missions, will be put in a bank account. And if some need comes up with the organization that they assist in, especially with Westman Sudan, then money will be released from that account to go to them right. to help out until such time that Westman Sudan can get back in there. So um, work is still going on down there. It's just without our missionaries, but we hope to have them uh, at some point back down there. So be in prayer about that as well, uh, that they would be able to uh, get back on the uh, mission field there. Uh, if you haven't got a Bible reading plan yet, I encourage you to pick one of those. This month, when we start the new year, we do have a... We're not going to have any event for this fifth Sunday. Uh, number one, the numbers are rising. They went up. I think 30 just in Butts County in 24 hours, um, and uh, they're just they're just all over the place right now. And uh, plus, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we know there's going to be some mandatory mask requirements coming through. Right now, they're saying just on federal properties, but you know how that goes. Yeah. Uh, I've heard. Uh, well, I might be getting the rumors, but there's a possibility of some lockdowns and all that. So we don't know what's going on. So we're just going to. Hold off on that, and then we will pick back up again uh, when we're able to do that. So uh, keep that in mind as well. Uh, also, um, I think that's it by way of announcements. I can't think of anything else. Uh, just want us to pray as we go to the Lord in prayer. We we uh, have many prayer requests. Those that are on the the text messages have gotten many texts, but I want to uh, especially pray for some friends of ours. Um, I'm, they're on the prayer list, just their first names, not their last name, and I'm not going to mention their names right now, but they are headed to the mission field. They have been training. Uh, they are going to a Muslim country, and so that's why I'm not disclosing where they're going or their names. Uh, but the, the devil, something must good must be going to happen to get there because the devil Amen. has been all in this. Uh, they were supposed to go to one state and then fly from that state over to another state where they would fly on. And uh, those arrangements got changed due to mechanical problems. They went to another state. Uh, we're supposed to leave from that state, but we're not able to. And then we're supposed to fly to another state. And then they got on a plane to head to the country they were going to be heading to and had mechanical problems and had to turn around and come back. And so they've been in a hotel, and hopefully today sometime they're going to get on the plane and actually make it to where they're supposed to go. So it has just been one hindrance after another right. after another, but we're going to uh, pray that the Lord is in control. And I remind you again, folks, everything that happens, happens for Amen. a reason. Even if it's Satan doing something bad, what does the Bible tell us? God will Amen. turn it into good. Yes, he will. Uh, he will turn it into good for those that trust him. And so we just need to trust in this matter. So let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. And just remember that. Remember those others that are on our prayer list and those that are on your heart this morning. Let's remember as we pray. Father, we just come to you today. 
We are grateful for this day. We thank you so much for being here today, Father. We thank you for those that are uh, here physically, and we thank you for those that can't be here but are uh, here online with us or will be viewing later on YouTube, Father. We just uh, pray that you would continue to bless this day, bless this service today, Lord God. Uh, strengthen us, Lord God, to deliver your word. Uh, strengthen our hearts to hear from you today, Lord God. They don't need to hear from me today, Father. They need to hear from you. And I pray that we would be prepared for that, God, that our hearts and minds would be ready to hear the things that we need to hear. Lord, that you would touch us in this place, Father. We lift up those on the prayer list, God. We just ask that you would touch each and every one of those. Many have COVID. Many are still recovering from COVID, Father. We just uh, pray for them, Lord God, that you would touch and heal quickly. Uh, there are other medical problems, Father. You know each and every situation. We lift those up to you, Father, and ask that you would move in all of those things. Lord, there are financial difficulties, maybe some that are struggling with food or family issues. There are deaths that have occurred, Father. You know all these needs, Father. There are other decisions. We need to make, Lord God, as we seek out your will in our lives, Father. And so I just lift those up to you today, God, and ask that you would move in each and every one, Lord, and that uh, you would move in such a manner that people would say, oh, it was God that did that in their life. That's what we want, Father. We want you to be honored. We want you to be glorified. We want people to say, look at what God has done in the lives of his people today. Lord, bless us in that, Father. Again, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. We pray for our missionaries right now, those that are currently stranded here in the U.S. and those that are having difficulties trying to get where they're going, Lord. We just lift them up to you, Lord God. Pray that they would have safe travel. They would get to their destination, Lord God, and that you would move mightily in the things that they'll be doing for you. Lord, again, we pray your blessing upon this place at this hour, and we ask it all in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, let's continue to sing. All right, thank you. Here's our page 107. 107. Please stand the first, second, and last verse. First, second, and last verse. Page 107. I'm gonna 
Bibles today, turn to Matthew chapter 10, New Testament book of Matthew chapter 10. Fitting song today, I must tell Jesus. And the last words of that chorus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Amen. Boy, that is becoming more and more relevant in the lives of Christians today. And it's going to become more and more relevant as we go along. And we need to understand that. Um, it's amazing. I, I thought back over the, the years we've been here and the messages I've preached and preached about things that would happen in the end times. And I had more than one person say, well, that's not going to happen in my lifetime. And yet, here we are. Right. And uh, it, it's interesting to see these things. The Lord here uh, uh, makes some predictions or tells about the disciples about some things that are going to happen. And these are things that I... Uh, happen in the disciples' lives, but these are also things that are going to happen, we believe, in the lives of Christians as we go along and get further and further in the days that we uh, live in. And so I want to preach a message today, and the title, title, not coming, hmm. the title is simply Hated. Hmm. Hated. Matthew 10, beginning in verse 16. Jesus, speaking to the disciples, says, Look, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd or as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Beware of them because they will hand you over to local courts and flog you in their synagogues. You will even be brought before governors and kings because of me to bear witness to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, don't worry about how or what you are to speak, for you will be given what to say at that hour, because it isn't you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father is speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and the father is child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Amen. And so we see here again Jesus telling the disciples about things that would come to pass in their lives. And of course they did come to pass in the lives of their disciples. But we see here things that we believe are going to occur, as I said a moment ago, in our lives. Now let me say right off the bat... Um, this is a time for Christians, as I mentioned last Sunday, to make a decision. Where are we going to stand? How are we going to stand? Right. Are we going to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are we going to fall when trouble, trial, and tribulation comes? We need to have that in our mind. We need to be thinking about those things before they come. Because they right. are going to come. And we need to know. Now, ultimately, we really don't know how we're going to react. But if we have it in our mind that we think, I'm going to react this way. And I'm planning on praying. And I'm going to continue to pray that I'll react this way. You have a better opportunity of handling it that way. I had things come up in my life and I said, well, I just think that I can handle them and I'm going to make up my mind that I'm going to handle them a particular way. And when they came about, I handled them the way I thought I was going to handle them. But what helped? I had in my mind an idea and a plan of what it was that I was going right. to do when that situation came along or when that trial came along. And so when I got to it, I wasn't shocked. I was expecting it to come, and I made up my mind how I was going to handle that situation. If we're all honest with ourselves, 
Uh, there have been times in our lives, and I'm not necessarily saying anything with our Christian life, but in any area of our life, if we're honest with ourselves, there are probably times where we have compromised something. Mm -hmm. We have compromised something. And why did we compromise something? Because a lot of times, or not a lot of times, all the time, nobody likes to be hated. All of us like to be liked. All of us like to be loved. And so sometimes if we knew that somebody was going to be offended by something we said, or they were going to be upset by something we said, we may have compromised and not said or done the thing we would have said and done in order that we... Uh, uh, not, not necessarily offend them, but that they wouldn't begin to dislike us and not care for us anymore because it's within us to be liked and to be cared. Right. But folks, when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, there can be no compromise. Right. People are going to hate you. The Bible is telling you right here, isn't it? Letting you know. Jesus said if they hated me, I assure you they're going to hate you as well. And you think, boy, Hate is sure a strong word, isn't it? Yes, hate is a strong word. It is not just dislike. It is not just unhappy with. It is despised. You're despicable in their sight. They hate everything about you. That's how it was with Jesus. That's how it is with Jesus now. And that's how it's going to be with us when the persecution really starts. Amen. And so we have to make up our minds right off the bat that we need to proclaim the truth. We need to be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ and just know that people are not going to be happy with it. They're going to be upset. As a matter of fact, they're going to get to the point that they're going to be angry and they're going to hate you for the things that you're proclaiming. That's right. This is not the only place that Jesus mentioned these things. In Luke chapter 6, verse 22, he says what? Blessed... Are you when people hate you? In other words, if you stand strong for the Lord Jesus Christ, people are going to hate you, but Jesus says, hey, guess what? In my book, you're blessed. Amen. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, insult you, and slander your name as evil because of the Son of Man. That's right. John 15, 18 and 19. If the world hates you, understand that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. However, because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of it, the world hates you. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. In the letter to the church of Smyrna, uh, Jesus says, Don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. Listen to that again. Mm. Don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. Right. Look, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison to test you. And you will experience affliction for ten days. Be faithful to the point of death and I will give you the crown of life. Jesus is saying, listen, you're going to be tried, you're going to be tested, but hang in there. Keep fighting, even to the point that they're going to kill you, because when they kill you, great is your reward in heaven. Amen. Amen. If you just stay faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ, don't give in, don't give up. Again, Jesus said, look, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. What are sheep? We've talked about sheep before. They have no self-defense whatsoever. They're not going to bow to bare teeth. They're not going to growl at you. They're not going to attack you with their paws. They're just going to stand there and look fluffy and be terrified. They have no natural self-defense. Who is one of their predators? Wolves are. What does that tell you? When we go into the world, there are going to be predators that are going to come after us. Right. And we have to depend on the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. He tells us to beware of them. They're going to hand us over to courts. They're going to flog us in the synagogues. We'll be brought before governors and kings. And what are we to do when we get there? Just as the Apostle Paul did in the book of Acts, we are to bear witness to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he goes on and says, listen, don't even worry about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of my Father will tell you everything you need to say Amen. at that time. Amen. We just depend on Him. 
Oh, in verse 21, it says, Brother will betray brother to death, and a father's child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. Mm -hmm. I'll remind you once again, I've said many times over the last couple of years, if you have not done it yet, you need to get a copy of George Orwell's 1984, and you need to read the book. It is the number three bestseller on Amazon right now. Yep. If you're not good at reading, go to YouTube, type in 1984. You can find them on there for free. You just have to watch a bunch of commercials. But you can see the movies. The 1956 version is probably about the best. There are several out there. But you will see the things about Big Brother and about children turning in their parents on the death that is displayed in this movie. And it will show you the things that are going to come about. It talks about the thought police in that movie, and I'll get yep. to that in just a second. But again, the things that we're reading in that book, we see come to pass in the day and the hour that we live in. I used to talk about these things years ago, and people said, oh, yeah, that's Greg. He's just one of these conspiracy theorists. You know, he's just going off on what his tangent. But now everybody's going, hmm. Right. That's right. Maybe Greg ain't as crazy as we thought he was. The Bible tells us it's going to happen. Some writer, fictional writer back several years ago told us it was going to happen. And guess what? It's happening. That's right. If you've seen the news at all in the last couple of weeks, it's happening. We see the things that are going on in the world today. We see cancel culture. Mm. If you say something or do something that doesn't agree with what the majority of the people, or at least the, they think they're the majority, think or say or believe, then they just want to cancel you. If it's something in history they don't like, they'll just erase it so it no longer exists because it exists. If we don't see it, it doesn't exist and it never happened. By the way, that's in 1984 as well. You yep. need to see the book or watch the movie. That's right. And we say that would never be, and yet we see people today rewriting history books, trying to change history, trying to eliminate those things. And yet I said before, when we elim eliminate the things in history and the things that remind us of the things in history, we better be careful because those things will come back and repeat. That's right. Amen. But we see this cancel culture. We see the things that the uh, recent elections have brought on. We see the purge from big tech and social media. Think about it. There are people that have been banned from Twitter. Yeah. Not just because of the things they said, but they were banned because of the things they might say. Right. Folks. That's thought police stuff right there. And it's happened with accounts being banned, not from just one person, but many people in groups and organizations. Not only that, people that were writing books are suddenly being canceled. People that are supposed to be giving talks are suddenly being canceled. Bank accounts are being closed, folks. Yep. Other accounts are being canceled. Why? Because they don't like the things that these people are saying. Yep. Or the things they might say. Yep. And so we see these things coming. Did you know that there have been people that have even been banned on flights? Mm. Told they can't fly. Yep. All because of some commenter that they might make a comment. Let me share some things with you that you probably haven't read. There was a lawyer that worked for the public broadcasting service. You remember PBS? All of us mm -hmm. watch PBS, right? It's been on yep. forever. Listen to the comments of one of their lawyers that was captured on video. And this was, I guess, right before the election or when all the recounts were going on. He says, even. If Biden wins, we go for all the Republican voters. And Homeland Security will take their children away. What do you think about that? Mm. And we'll put them in re-education camps. He adds, referring to the children of Republican voters. Mm -mm -mm. Leftists on a Twitter thread responded to a question that asked, how do you deprogram 75 million people? 
by suggesting Trump supporters should be interned in re-education camps and that all conservative talk radio should be banned. Now let me say again that Twitter banned people because of things they may say to incite violence and yet listen to the things that were put on Twitter that they didn't get rid of. That's right. Listen. One verified user called for Nuremberg trials. You remember your history. That was after World War II with the Nazis. Mm. Re-education camps for those salvageable, said another. Firing squad for irredeemable malcontents. Mm. Round up entire families to ensure the disease doesn't spread. Mm -hmm. Twitter, folks! Now replace the word Republican and conservative with Christian. Mm -mm -mm. Think about it. They're doing this to a major political party. How long before they turn on Christians? Right. And you'll read these same things. Oh, what do we do about Christians? Well, we'll get Homeland Security to take their children away. We'll brainwash them. We'll re-educate them. Mm -mm -mm. The ones we can't will send before a firing squad. We'll round up entire families to make sure this disease of Christianity doesn't spread. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, we're not that close, are we? Mm. Uh, Teresa read me a message last night from a former pastor of ours. I won't mention his name. He's no longer pastoring, but he goes to a large church and he see, teaches a Sunday school class online, much like our Wednesday night service. Right. He received a notice because of the things that he was teaching, and I don't know what it was. But his notice said you were suspended from Facebook indefinitely for creating events, that's teaching, to protect the rest of the people from harm. Mm -mm -mm. Also, he's banned from creating groups, nor can he comment or post on anyone else's page. There are ministries that I go to and gone to for a long time, and now at their videos you see banned content. Right. Banned content. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm surprised we haven't. beginning to happen. But again, you say, well, that's preaching, though. They're coming after a baby preacher and those that preach the truth. But ordinary Christians, oh, they're not coming after us yet. Mm -hmm. Read articles. I'm not going to read the whole thing. NBC News. You can look it up online. NBC.com. Christian nationalism's COVID vaccine now threatens America's herd community. NBC News, folks. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Let me just read some passages. Americans have found all sorts of reasons to be suspicious of vaccines. One community that appears disproportionately opposed is Christian nationalism. In fact, we find in the new study that Americans who strongly embrace Christian nationalism, close to a quarter of the population, are much more likely to question the safety of vaccines and they say to be misinformed about them. Mm. E.g. believing that vaccines cause autism or don't work or that those who administer them are dishonest. And I will button my lip right now. <laughs> if enough of these Americans resist a COVID-19 vaccine based on suspicions rooted in misinformation, the results would be disastrous for achieving herd immunity and reducing the spread of the virus. In another section, they say most often a Christian American is one where white, native-born, politically and religiously conservative Christian Americans are at the center of the culture. In our recent book, we show that in order to understand various issues animating the culture wars, we must pay close attention to Christian nationalism. Close attention. 
Folks, I don't know about y'all, but I'm not in a cultural war. I believe the Word of God and I preach the Word of God. They may be at war with me, but I'm not at war with them. I'm just proclaiming the truth. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now, this is the part I really want you to hear the last three. So, just as with other common cultural war issues like gun control, same sex marriage, or policing, Christian nationalism appears closely intertwined with Americans' attitudes toward vaccines and the COVID-19 pandemic. <clears throat> One limit of these data, listen to this, is that the researchers at Chapman were unable <clears throat> to ask about a COVID-19 vaccine directly given that they fielded the survey in the fall of 2019. Mm. But we feel confident connecting Christian nationalism and Americans' likely responses to the COVID-19 vaccine. Mm. Not what their responses are, but their likely response. That's thought police folks right. stuff. That's right. Stuff folks. Be fired up. <laughs> but we see these things happening that we've been talking about. That's right. Even faster than what I've proclaimed. What the Bible tells us, I have always thought since I got saved that I would see much of this in my lifetime, but I thought it would be in my later years. Right. And yet we're seeing it now. And then listen to the final paragraph. <clears throat> this is a significant concern. Hmm. Christian nationalist ideology will almost certainly serve as a barrier for a sizable minority of Americans who need the vaccine. Policy makers and healthcare professionals will need to attend to this hurdle as they plan and then execute any broad scale vaccination strategy. What does that mean? <clears throat> you probably already heard in New York that they were planning in the city to sign an ordinance saying that anybody refusing to receive the vaccine would be put into a camp. Right. would be isolated somewhere and the such time that they either got the vaccine or determined to no longer be a danger and that would be determined by medical personnel and the final decision would be to that point. Mm -hmm. Again, place refused, replace refused to get vaccine Christian. Mm -hmm. Not that far step based on an article from NBC News. Right. Why? Because as I've said so many times before, the name of Jesus is hated. Right. It is hated by the world. It is hated by people. It is even hated by people that call themselves Christians but don't believe in this book. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> Our soon-to-be president is going to on one of the first days in office, sign an executive order allowing boys to go into girls' bathrooms mm. and changing rooms. Mm -mm -mm. He says his Catholic faith is going to make sure that everybody's treated equally. Mm. To use the Word of God to condone that kind of garbage mm -mm -mm. is unreal, and yet we see these things. Coming. That's right. And we think, oh, I guess folks are upset, but no, it's more than that. They hate and despise us. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a couple of biblical examples. You remember Stephen? <clears throat> Acts 26, 9 through 11. Uh, before I get to Stephen, Paul before King Agrippa, talking about the time with Stephen and after that when he was persecuting the church. He says, in fact, I myself was convinced that it was necessary to do many things in opposition to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Mm. I actually did this in Jerusalem, and I locked up many of the saints in prison since I had received authority for the, from the chief priest. When they were put to death, I was in agreement against them. 
In all the synagogues, I punished them and tried to make them blaspheme. Listen, since I was terribly enraged at them. That's hatred. Mm -hmm. Terribly enraged. I pursued them even to foreign cities. Have you ever seen somebody so mad that they're just enraged? Mm. Listen again to Stephen, Acts 7, 54 through 58. When they heard these things, they were enraged and gnashed their teeth at him. Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gave them to heaven. He saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He said, look. I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. They yelled at the top of their voices, covered their ears, and together rushed against him. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their garments at the feet of a young man named Paul. They were enraged. They had absolute hatred to the point that they lost control and they gnashed their teeth. You ever been so mad you gritted your teeth? Mm. I told you before, I don't grit my teeth much, but when I get upset, I bite the inside of my lip, and boy, there's times when I've drawn blood. I've been in so long. But people are going to be enraged, and they're close to that point now again at other people, but before long, the focus is going to be on Christians, and are you prepared? That's right. That That's right. Again, you're going to be hated for the name of Jesus. So the question becomes, what is it that we are to do? Verse 16 again, Jesus says, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Mm -hmm. Therefore, be shrewd as serpents. In other words, be wise as serpents. Serpents are not dumb animals. Right. Serpents just as soon leave humans alone. Most humans get bit because they either accidentally step on one or they're messing with right. Most of the time, the snake wants to get away from you a whole lot worse than you want to get with people. Leave them alone. <laughs> and I see my wife almost tear stuff up. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the snake's probably the same way. <clears throat> but they're shrewd, they're smart. And he's saying we need to be smart in how we act and deal and do in these situations in the last day. But he also says we need to be as innocent as doves. We need to be as innocent as doves. So we need to be shrewd. Well, what does this shrewdness and innocence mean? Well, verse 23, he tells us. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Again, we go with the Holy Spirit. If God still has something for you to do, and Paul and the rest of the disciples, remember when Paul, when he was falling on a rampage, what happened? Except for the main uh, apostles, everybody scattered. Right. They went to other towns to avoid the arrest, to avoid the imprisonment, to avoid the execution. But what happened? In every town they went to, the word of God was preached. That's right. And people got saved. And so there may come a time where the Lord said, it's time for you to leave this place. Don't stand and fight. Don't stand and argue your case. Leave and I will send you to the next place that needs to hear the gospel. There may be a time when the Lord says, stand fast, you're going to be arrested, and I will give you the word. Amen. Because those leaders need to hear the word of the gospel. That's right. But we have to be in tune enough with the Holy Spirit to know when to do these things. Amen. Again, we need to understand we're in these times. Listen to 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5. This explains to us how we're to fight these battles. He says, For although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. Since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds, we demolish arguments, and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive 
who will bite her off. We're not to get a Christian militia together and go fight the government. Right. Our job is to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember when Jesus said, hey, if I wanted to, all I would have to do is say the word and 12 legions of angels would show up just like that. Amen. And I say before, in the Old Testament, if one angel killed 185,000 men, mm -hmm. what do you think 12 legions would do? This world would be gone. Just like that. Right. No. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities. It's against powers. Yep. It's against the prince of the power of the air. We recognize why these people are doing the things they do. Because all they know is Satan and the things of this world. They don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And it is our job to proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I will say, too, whether it actually comes to any physical type of combat, that, again, is between you and the Lord. Mm. I'm not going to tell you absolutely don't, but I'm not going to tell you absolutely do. Again, you need to be in the Holy Spirit. That's right. But just know that our battle is not in the flesh. Now, let me ask this question. Do you have a plan? Mm. What if this church gets kicked off of YouTube and Facebook? Do you have a plan? If you can't watch your church online anymore, do you have a plan? What if all ministries get banned off of Facebook and YouTube? What is your plan? Do you have a plan in place for maybe your family and maybe some people in that area that can do a small group or a small house church and that somebody can lead a Bible study? What is your plan? Have you even thought about these things? Because at some point they're going to come to pass. Right. Churches like this, when they preach the truth, they're going to kick off. Now you can get on and see that garbage where they say, send me your money and I'll be well. Yeah. Where they say, hey, you just uh, conform to everything the government says and everything will be fine. And there's ministries that are saying that. Yeah. The churches that preach the truth will be banned. Yep. Yeah. Do you have a plan in place? Do you know what you're going to do? Something you need to think about. Yep. You need to be prepared for. What else is it we're supposed to do? Very simply, the things that we're supposed to be doing now. Amen. We talked about those that were on the slippery slope of denying God last week. Our job is to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. In the times we live in, we get kicked off the air. That's okay. Uh, what is it we're to do? We're not to go run, hide in a bunker somewhere. We're to proclaim the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Through word and deed, people not only need to hear the word, but see that we're living out the things that we proclaim. Amen. And then if the Lord so leads, we flee from one area to another when they come after us and trust me they will come I asked a question it's probably been a while ago let me ask it again if you were arrested hmm. and taken to trial is there enough evidence from your life Right. I mean, if they went and looked at all the things you shot for, would there be any indication that you shot for Christian things? If they were to go in and see what you watch on YouTube, would they be able to see that, yes, they watch Christian ministries on YouTube? Or they watch Christian things on Facebook? They post things on Facebook. Right. They bought Bibles. Are there Bibles in their homes? Are they in a church? Is there enough in your life that they would say, yes, without a doubt, this person is a Christian? Amen. If 
People ask sometimes, why do you have so many Bibles? I might start hiding them, because at some point they're going to come start taking them away. When they do, I just bring out another. <laughs> when they do, I just bring out another one. I bring out another one. I bring out another one. They'll definitely convict me because they've got everything I've said on camera for the last Amen. eight months. <laughs> That's right. It's all posted on YouTube. All I got to do is sit back and hit the play button. Yeah. That's okay. But we continue to be about the Lord's business. You know, in the book of Esther, there was a phrase for such a time as this. Amen. If you still have breath in your body and you're still alive during these times, it is for such a time as this that God has placed you here. Amen. And, and we continue about his business. And again, know too that even if you're arrested and tried, and even if you're executed, and there'll be public execution, folks, I promise mm. you, they want everybody to see what's going to happen if you believe yeah. in Jesus. Yeah, that's right. There may be some that will even get saved when they see your faith. Amen. You die. How do I know that? Boxes, book of mine. Mm -hmm. Story after story. Jesus said, you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. I have preached the things I have preached for the last several years in order to help prepare you for these times that are coming and that are going to be coming. Make up your mind. Have a plan in place. Amen. But again, though, at the end of the day, God's got you. Yes. Let me close with a passage of Scripture. And I got something that emailed the other day, and there's a Bible app called YouVersion. And it's a very popular app, and this is the most read Scripture in 2020 on YouVersion. Isaiah 41, 10 through 13. God says, Do not fear. For I am with you. Amen. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Be sure that all who are enraged, say there's that word again, against you will be ashamed and disgraced. Those who contend with you will become as nothing and will perish. <coughs> you will look for those who contend with you. You will not find them. Those who war against you will become absolutely nothing. For I am the Lord your God, who holds your right hand, who says to you, do not fear. I will help you. Amen. Amen. We have no need to fear the things that are coming. Mm -mm. The Lord is with us. I encourage you to maybe print that out in large letters and tape it somewhere so you can see it on a regular basis. When things get bad, go back and look at this passage of Scripture and say, hey, it's going to be okay because God is with me. Amen. I have no need to fear. I feel like I'm slipping down the rabbit hole, yet he has me with his right hand. He will uphold me. He will sustain me. Amen. And I have no need to fear. Let's stand. Father, we just come to you again grateful for this day. Father, we thank you for the blessing that you've provided. Lord, even though we see difficult times ahead, we thank you for the times we're in because you have put us in these times to be the light and salt in the earth, Father. Mm. we need to be about those things Lord help us to spend more time with you more time in your word more time in prayer more time in listening to your word preached or taught Father help us to realize that these times are upon us but we have no need to fear 
Help us to stand strong, Lord. Be proclaimers of your word. The Lord, <coughs> our life, Lord, thank you. Again, we're thankful for these that have come this way. Lord. Go with us now from this place. Father, help us just depend on you each and every day of our life. We thank you again, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much.